So Chairman Volcker did choke off money supply and killed inflation. Inflation had peaked. In fact, I don't think many people believe it peaked as it did in 1981 until 1986 when oil prices crashed. Uh, so the inflation expectations and the inflation expectations were embedded in the system. And, um, and as we usually do, we'll start with uh, policy, so fiscal policy, monetary policy. I'll weave in economics with economic policy because, I mean, I'm sorry, I'll weave in uh, economics with Fed policy because um, the Fed is supposedly data-driven. And uh, there's a lot of data out there that suggests that the Fed policymakers should not be unanimous in their vote to tighten policy. Uh, unan unanimity seems to be the order of the day. I don't know if it's uh, from on high, Chairman Powell, or if it's really there. Uh, but uh, we have some data points that uh, we think the Fed would find interesting and, and perhaps even provocative. Uh, then we will go into market indicators uh, quickly and talk a little bit about innovation and uh, how it is valued as a factor in the market. So starting with fiscal policy, uh, we're, uh, we're looking at the midterm elections right now. So basically, nothing new is happening on fiscal policy, which is just as well. Uh, in the midterms, we probably, as we usually do, uh, in the midterms have a changeover uh, or a loss of seats uh, uh, for the incumbent party in the House, and, and that will probably turn the House uh, this time. And so I think that the policies looking forward will be focused on um, getting spending, taxes, regulation down, and maybe opening up the spigots a bit more in terms of energy production here in this country instead of going to Venezuela or Saudi Arabia. Monetary policy, well, uh, let's just look at the numbers first. Uh, M2 growth peaked uh, at 27% in 2020 and has been slowing ever since. It hit 4.1% in August. Uh, we believe it is closing in or might be below 3% on a year-over-year -year basis in September, uh, which doesn't leave a lot of room for growth or inflation unless velocity is really picking up the, the rate at which money turns over. And we're in an environment where we do not believe velocity is picking up. If anything, um, I think individuals and businesses are becoming more concerned are spending less freely. Uh, so if you look at M2 also, you'll see that it actually peaked in March. Now this is very unusual to see sequential declines in money. Um, so it, we have not gotten back above that March peak and uh, we may not get uh, back above it the way the ray uh, that Fed policy is going. Um, and I think uh, I'd like to build the case a little more here that the Fed is probably making a mistake. Um, we, I say prob probably because I have to from a compliance point of view, but I really do believe the Fed is making a mistake. Uh, and uh, reflecting a little bit more on the Jackson Hole speech that, uh, that Chairman Powell gave in late August, um, we've, uh, we've come to recognize that uh, Chairman Powell really does think he is the reincarnation of Chairman Volcker, that we need him to take a sledgehammer to inflation, much like Volcker did. And, and history has treated Chairman Volcker very kindly. He did turn the tide on inflation. Now what he did though, was he turned a tide that had been building for 15 years. It started in 1964 with the Vietnam War and with the Great Society. So many social programs started at that time under President Johnson. And for 15 years, fiscal and monetary policy pretty much went rogue uh, as we look at history. Uh, even after shocks to the system, uh, like the oil embargo, uh, 
the, and the stimulus that came about because of it, both monetary and fiscal policy. We never saw the kind of slowdown in monetary and fiscal policy that we're seeing right now. Uh, federal spending is still down 14% on a year-over-year -year basis. You never saw a decline in fiscal policy spending in the, in the 70s. Uh, monetary policy seemed to be on automatic pilot back then. Uh, the dollar was getting crushed toward the end uh, of the 70s, adding to the inflationary, um, inflationary fire. And uh, so Chairman Volcker did choke off money supply uh, and, and killed inflation. It took a long time for uh, people to believe that inflation had peaked. In fact, I don't think um, many people believe it peaked as it did in 1981 until 1986 when oil prices crashed. Uh, so the inflation expectations and uh, uh, the inflation expectations were embedded in the system and it was uh, very difficult uh, and, and Volcker did a masterful job. So that was over a 15 year period that inflation had built. Um, by the time the Fed got around to tackling it this time, it was not a 15-year problem, it was a 15-month problem. And from our point of view, it was caused primarily by shocks, major shocks to the system uh, that we had never seen before. We had not had, uh, since Spanish influenza, a global pandemic. pandemic. And uh, we, had, we did not have the supply chain problems, two years worth of them, uh, that we had because of the COVID panic. And then of course we had another shock to top those off, and that was Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So these are shocks to the system. Uh, this was not a period of embedding inflation expectations, and yet Chairman Powell is taking a sledgehammer that is actually bigger, uh, much bigger, uh, it's at least six times bigger right now and, and could be eight to ten times bigger uh, if the Fed does raise uh, the Fed funds rate another, another 75 basis points on November 2nd. And what do I mean by that? Well, Chairman Volcker uh, was dealing with double-digit interest rates. Uh, he took interest rates from 10% to 20%. Now, by the time he did that, uh, consumers and businesses had gotten used to maneuvering around inflation. Uh, so while that sounds shocking, going from 10 to 20 percent, and it did have some shock value, uh, it, uh, it wasn't the same as what we're experiencing today with Chairman Powell and the Fed. Um, today, we've gone from 0.25 percent on the Fed funds rate to, to 3.25, which is 13, uh, a 13-fold increase, not a two-fold increase. 